You are listening to Focal Points, a podcast by Enphoto hosted by Dory Howell. You're in the right place to learn how to stand out among your competition and build a photography business that you love. Let's get started. All right. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I don't know how many times I'm going to be able to say welcome in the same episode, but I'm probably going to do that a lot today. I am excited to get started. This is something that I have been working on with the great people at Enphoto with for a couple months. And to see this actually happen and start to roll out is just something that is very exciting for me. And I hope that you are going to enjoy the ride that we are on together. But can we talk for a minute? Like just kind of lean in and just between you and me, we're friends, right? You ready? The past two and a half years has been hard. And I don't really want to start this like on a down note, but let's just be realistic. For a lot of people listening who are located all over the world, we've all had very, very different ideas about how to run our business and how we can run our business in the middle of a global pandemic. What has that meant for us as small business entrepreneurs, especially if you're a one-person shop? Well, let me give you a little bit of an experience that I've had over the past the past two and a half years. It can kind of give you a little bit of an idea of how I'm approaching my business these days, how things have changed what I had to change and what I chose to adapt to make things better for me and my family. Um, I know that for me, dealing with COVID in my house, I had relatives die. I had um, COVID in my home two times, once at the beginning of the pandemic and once recently. I sold a business in the middle of the, of the pandemic and so much more. And all of those things radically changed how I view my business and how I want to work moving forward. And I think that happened to a lot of different people. But it's not all bad. All those things were bad. Well, some of them were bad. They weren't necessarily ideal and they maybe didn't come at the best time. But I was able to move through those things with something that I think I've come out on the other side with other side being, you know, completely subjective because I know it might change tomorrow in a way that I know I can serve my clients best and I can be taking beautiful pictures. And it's something that I thought I would share with you today as we start out on this journey with the podcast. You know, many of us had challenges in the fact that not only did people not want to come out of their houses because they were fear for their safety or their family's safety, but also the government the government wouldn't let us run our businesses during this time. We were told we needed to shut down or anything like that. So I am in complete awe of anyone who decided to start a business during this time or trudged through it and came out better on the other side. It really, really, really is quite admirable. And I think you should give yourself a little pat on the back if you did that. But the one thing of living through this pandemic, what it did for me was it really brought into focus what I do and why I do it. You know, nothing has proven more important over the last period of time than the people that we love and our families and the things that we hold dear. And I keep getting that feedback from my clients. They're saying, you know, the conversations that I have with them now are not so much about the perfect location or the perfect outfit or the perfect hair, losing the 20 pounds or that type of thing. Gone are the days where dad is totally stressed out and giving me a hard time because he doesn't want to be there, right? Right. We know they do that. And mom is stressed out because the kids aren't behaving or someone spilled something on the front of their shirt on the way to the session or things like that. It seems like there has been a bit of a shift. People are coming to these sessions to celebrate the fact that they lived through something, literally lived through something that could have killed them, and they just want to celebrate the fact that they are together. And, you know, things are a bit more relaxed and things are a bit more accepting of not having to be, quote unquote, picture perfect. They're more in favor of just capturing their families at that time. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that there's kind of a heaviness of why these images are so important. Um, I know that when my mom passed away of cancer right at the beginning of COVID, that one of the last things we did together as a family before she went into hospice and, and had that journey was we did a family portrait session. And I've shared those images over on my Instagram um, at the Dory Howell, which you can go check out and follow me there. But 
those images are very, very important to me. And I did that because I wanted to remember her during that time. And I think there is kind of a, a bittersweet idea in the back of people's minds that this needs to be addressed. You know, losing someone you love is always tragic, but when they're taken away suddenly and tragically and unexpectedly, that's a special kind of sting, which I didn't encounter. But I lost my mom due to cancer. So the sadness that I was experiencing at that time was shared, was being shared by the whole entire world, that trauma that we all were experiencing. And those kind of changes, they change people and they change our society. And I definitely see that where I live. And I think it's a pretty safe bet that you can probably see that where you are too. When I reopened my studio after the pandemic, you know, once I was allowed to, because they had closed businesses for a while, people really weren't that excited to go get family pictures taken. It was really only the people hiring me who had to hire me because they wanted to capture certain things in their life at that time, whether that be um, the birth of a baby, maybe they secretly eloped or that type of thing. It was really something that became more of a necessity. Um, but in the middle of all that, I knew I needed to get back behind the camera. I, need, I, knew, I knew I needed to get people back in front of my camera and I needed to start making a paycheck. And so I had to change quite a few things in my business that a lot of people would have looked at me and said, oh, those are die hard ways that Dory runs her business and she does not compromise. Well, guess what? The pandemic kind of made this situation where I had to compromise on some things. So I'm known for being someone who taught and, and was very, very proud and and kind of insistent that photographers need to use an IPS method, meaning they need to sell products and do all those types of things. And that was great. But the fact of the matter is, is that no one wanted to meet with me in person. And because I ran my studio out of my home and I did a lot of my selection appointments out of my home, to be quite honest, I didn't want anyone coming into my home either. So when I opened back up, I kind of had to pitch a lot of the preconceived ideas that I had about how to run a successful business out the window because they weren't going to work anymore. It forced me to think outside the box. Now, for my friends who've been following me for years, I don't want you to worry or anything like that. I'm still providing my awesome products to my clients, you know, by end photo lab, right? But I'm choosing not to sell them at any in-person selection appointment. And I don't want to sit across the, from the table from them. I don't want to necessarily wear a mask all the time. And I think that's something that my clients share because we don't all know what comes into that room with us. So I do this because it's more for my protection and my family's protection. We have had COVID in our home twice now, once at the start of the pandemic and the second time was recently. And having someone who has to be quarantined is a pain. It's not easy. It's not, it takes a certain amount of energy and emotions to deal with that because there is a fear and you are worried about them and that type of thing. And you don't want to have to worry about it. And I don't want to have to do that again. Two times was enough. Once was enough. I, I really do not want to have to kind of upset my life in that way. So it really is for my my family's protection. And then on the upper, other side, it's also for my client's protection as well. Clients used to come to my home for selection appointments, like I said earlier, or sometimes I would go to them and I enjoy doing that. And as much as I love my client, I love my family so much more. And those days are just gone for a while. And I'm, I'm sure that many of you, many of you, many of you can relate to that. So the change meant that I had to come up with a workflow that allowed a prospect to go through my former in-person process, but I had to use technology to do it. And this posed some challenges. See if you can relate to this. One, I'm a very personable person in person. I like being in person. I like the energy that I get from other people. I'm not necessarily an extrovert, but I'm someone that it thrives on that for a while, then I need to go home and take a nap. I know there's a name for it. It just escapes me at this time. But I liked being with people. I'm quick to think on my feet. I like the challenge of thinking on my feet quickly. And I'm really good at picking up the physical cues that I would get from clients when they would be looking at images and where they would start to well up and I would give them a tissue and that type of thing. Or when we were discussing pricing or that type of thing and maybe they wanted more than they could afford at that time of reading, how they would maybe pull back a little bit, get a little, a certain expression on their face. Um, 
but I enjoyed doing that so much in person. And I wasn't able to do that anymore. So I lost a bit of my footing when I realized I was going to have to go to video appointments. I lost a little bit of my footing of how I was going to interact with my clients that I find is such an integral part of my success of how I deal with my clients. And then, like I said, I no longer had the option of showing them beautiful products more than one time during the process itself. I had one time to show them products and that was at the session. And let's be honest with you, after or before a session is not the best time to be able to pull out your product samples, show them everything that you offer, especially if you're on location or in their home. Because before the session, mom's anxious and maybe the baby's not quite settled and dad's just getting his shirt on and, you know, they're ironing and they're figuring all that stuff out. Um, if you're at home or if you're in a park, they just want to get there. They maybe have an argument in the car. They're ready to go when they get there. And then you do your session. And at the end of the session, it's usually not ideal because they're ready to get home, especially in the middle of a pandemic. If they are outside or you're in their home, they want to get you out. They want to get back to where they feel that, that they're safe. Their kids are done with their session. They're pulling off their nice clothes. And usually if I gave them a toy or something to play with, that only lasted for just a few minutes. And it wasn't the greatest way to be able to show them products, right? So I had to come up with a few things like a product guide and I had to talk about them more specifically at the, at the points before the session. I'm a true believer that in order to be successful in photography, especially if you're selling products like albums and well art, that you need to be able to get your clients in a, in a frame of mind that when they start seeing these products, they start imagining themselves on the pages. They start seeing the beautiful scene that you've set up during the session on the pages or on their wall. That's part of the whole sales process because once they start seeing themselves on those pages, they start realizing that they want to have that in their home and it is just part of the sales process. So I, I lost a little bit of that moving to video appointments and I thought it was going to be a huge detriment to my business. I thought it was going to be huge. I was hearing from all the um, product-based photographers, you should never do that, never do that. And I'm just like, but I have to, this isn't working for me, right? And so I moved any extra meetings at that point in time. The third thing that I did is I moved any extra meetings at that point to video. And I use Google Meet or Google Workplace for my video appointments. It comes as a, as a bonus with or is included with my Google Workspace account, which is my domain names. They host my domain names. They host on my email account, all of that. There's so many tools within the Google, used to be Google Suite, G Suite, but now they call it Google Workplace. There's so many things in that package that you can use and have access to. And I didn't want to pay for a Zoom account. I think for me, I looked at it, it was going to be like $900 for the year or something like that for the amount of meeting time that I wanted and that everything like that. And I could do it over Google Meet for $12 a month. And I'm like, yeah, I'll take that option, right? So it was super easy to set up. It's super easy for my clients to access. Everyone is used to video appointments. They know what that means now. And so being able to do that was so, so awesome. And in later episodes, I'll go into the tools that I use to run my business and how they have made things more effective for me. But I really had to lean into that when I was coming out of this um, pandemic period because it wasn't a choice. I had to be able to be comfortable to use these tools in a way that were going to make my clients happy and also make me the same amount of money. So my old workflow, we had two phone calls, one session, one in-person ordering appointment, and one in-person delivery appointment. And if you added to that, sometimes I would go and consult with them on their wardrobe, and sometimes I would go and do like a home walk tour to see if they wanted certain images on their wall. And all of those were in-person, and I had to eliminate pretty much all of that. I just want to interrupt things here a little bit and let you know about a really special deal that Enphoto has for our podcast listeners. Did you know that Enphoto offers one of the richest, most generous sample discounts available in our industry today from any of the professional labs? If you go to blog.enphoto.com slash podcast, go ahead and hit my link and you can be taken to a page that if you sign up, you will get a 75% discount on any sample product and a future discount on any products that you order 
for your clients in the upcoming year. There are some restrictions as there always are, but this is a great, great benefit to you if you need to build up your library of sample products for your business. Now, samples are something that I update usually every two to three years. So if it's time for you to do this or you've never done this, you absolutely positively want to take advantage of this discount today. Head over to blog.enphoto.com slash podcast, grab your discount, grab the show notes for this episode, and you will not be sorry. So before that quick break from Enphoto, we were talking about how I had to change everything in my systems and I needed to create a new workflow and I need to move everything online except for a session and delivery. Those are the two things that I kept in person. I didn't start drop shipping from my lab. I didn't think that that was the important action. I wanted to be able to deliver things to them, knowing that sometimes I was going to be delivering to their front door and they would be on the other side of the door and I would get there and I would wave through the window and I would go back to my car, watch them come out and pick it up and then head out. That's somehow, sometimes how they worked. And I was leaving thousands and thousands of dollars of products on people's doorsteps, porches, watching them pick it up from afar. I never got to see the best part of the whole thing for me is seeing them open these products and see their faces and see how they react to these beautiful images. And I was missing that. But that's one of the compromises that I made in this process. My clients are busy professionals living in an area of the country where some of, we have some of the longest work weeks in Washington, D.C., and they work lots of hours and some of the worst traffic. Now, we're not at the top of the list like Los Angeles or New York, but we have a lot of traffic in the Washington, D.C. area. And on any given day, it takes 30 minutes to an hour and a half just to maybe get across town. That's being generous. But this is normal and it cuts into the time that most people would prefer really to spend with their families or doing something else, right? I enjoyed my prior workflow, but I feel that this one has been much more conducive to my life and how I want to run my business. And it took me a long time to be okay with doing my selection appointments over video. It wasn't something I went kind of picking and screaming. It had to be a necessity. I felt like I was letting all my clients down because of the service that I was giving was not necessarily what I wanted it to be. But my clients liked meeting me in person because it was fun. We had a good time. We had snacks. You know, they were handing me a big check or we were swiping their credit card, but we still hugged at the end of the transaction. It was great. And I can honestly say that some of my clients are most of my well-liked friends or they are some of my most well-liked acquaintances. But moving to video was hard. I'm going to say it was hard. And it was it would be hard for anyone to do who is like me, who wants to be in front of people all the time. Um, and so there was a big, big change with that. And I had to deal with some shame and some guilt because of that. I had to deal with the guilt because I didn't think that I was giving my clients exactly what they wanted and what they deserved. And I had to deal with it because I had taught for so many years one thing. And now all of a sudden I was making a pretty huge shift into only doing things online. And I'm sure that you've had decisions in your business that have caused you to bring up some of those same emotions, but I had to be, I had to learn to be okay with that change. And I want to encourage you that if you are struggling with decisions in your business, that maybe you're causing you to feel a little guilty, maybe a little shame, that type of thing, that is all part of running your own business. You have to be able to make these decisions. I had to really be okay with this and learn that I was making these changes, not only for my client's benefit, for my client's benefit and for my family's benefit. I had to learn how to run my business in a way that worked uniquely well for me. It didn't matter what I was hearing all these so-called experts say out on the interwebs because they were running their business in a way that was unique and successful for them. I needed to do it in a way that was unique and successful for me. My video appointments now turned out to be fun and interactive. My images still make my clients cry. I still see them reaching for the tissues and they still say all the kind things that they used to. I just don't get the hug at the end of the appointment. But guess what? I have the same sales average that I did before and that alone is a win-win. Because technically I'm making even more money because I'm spending less time on appointments and less time driving and all of those same things. Same with my clients. 
and making the same amount. So technically I'm actually making more. So as you listen to this story, I want to encourage you in the fact that you are not alone. If you've had to make changes in your business, if you have felt the emotional pull of making those changes, if your clients have gone with you one way or the other, this is part of growth and change and your business is only going to be stronger for it. So I have some challenges for you this week that hopefully you will take to heart. Number one, realize that the landscape of what we do may have changed in your area, right? Because a lot of this is area specific based on rules and, and protocols and that type of thing. The landscape may have changed and that means you may need to change. You may need to change things in your workflow and you may need to change things in your marketing to attract the people that you need for your business. That is okay. Really, it's okay. The change is okay. And also, I want you to be okay with making those changes and to your new workflow and processes. Try new things. Really, try new things. I promise you, you do not have to do things like everyone else does them. Some of my most enjoyable coaching clients and most successful coaching clients are photographers who have realized they've, sh they've shucked the rule book out the window after the pandemic and they realize this is not going to work for me anymore. I need to really think outside the box and do something different to attract the people that I need to be successful in my business. And I want to encourage you, if you're sitting on an idea that's a little bit crazy or you may not have had it hurt, been done before, I want to challenge you to do that thing and try it. The only way you're going to know if it works is if you try it. And it really could be the one unique thing that you do in your business that sets you apart. Copying someone else's marketing campaign, copying someone else's workflow, copying someone else's email templates are not going to allow you to see the success that you want to see for your business. And then your number three, you knew this was coming. The podcast is sponsored by Enfoto, so you need to make sure that you are offering wonderful, beautiful products from a professional quality lab like Enfoto. Look them up, enfoto.com. And if you do these three things, you'll be on your way to a happier business that is better suited for you, your clients, and most importantly, your personal goals. Whew. Well, that wraps up this very first episode of the Focal Points Podcast. Thank you for sticking with me till the end. I'm so glad that you've joined with me in this journey. So here's what you're going to be expect as we move forward in future weeks, right? In future months. A fresh episode is going to be released every week. Now, right now, we've kind of front-loaded that, and there's four episodes listed, and you can go to the blog.nphoto.com slash podcast to learn that URL because you're going to be using it a lot. And you'll be able to see those episodes loaded up so you can binge all of those together, right? But I want to talk about on this podcast the things that are pressing you as a professional photographer at this time. So I want to hear from you. If you go over to Instagram and you follow me at the Dory Howell and send me a DM and tell me who do you want to hear on this podcast? What do you want me to talk about? What are the things that are bothering you in your business that are challenging you in your business? Let me know. I will design podcasts to answer all those questions. I promise. This is something that I truly want to be interactive. So if you follow me at the Dory Howell on Instagram, you will see that I truly, truly want to help you in your business. So do me a favor, head over to the show notes page, which is that URL blog.nphoto.com slash podcast, right? And you're going to find a free gift from me, a download about the this episode. You're going to find links to the Nphoto special that I mentioned during the commercial earlier in the podcast. And you're going to find my social media links so that we can connect. So you want to hit blog.infoto.com slash podcast. And finally, if you have a topic or a guest that you would like to see on this podcast, please, please, please DM me and let me know. I will call anybody, ask anybody if I think that it is something that's going to benefit you and your business. But the only way I can know about people is if you let me know about them. So you can find my, all my social media and everything at that blog.infoto.com dot com slash podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. That was a lot of notes for the very first episode. I promise we won't have so much homework, you know, in the future. If you're feeling so inclined and you liked what you've heard today, go ahead and head over to Apple Podcasts. Leave us a five-star review. We truly, truly do appreciate those reviews so very much. It lets people know that you're getting value, you're going to get value out of what we have here and we'll encourage them to listen as well. Thank you so much for joining us and I look forward to seeing you soon. 
on the next episode of the Focal Points podcast brought to you by InPhoto. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to Focal Points, an InPhoto podcast hosted by Dory Howell. We are glad you joined us and we will see you next time.